Alright, welcome back. So, today we're going to do controllers and how to move. Now, for this, I'm going to do two parts. One is translation-based controllers, meaning moving via translation, the vector positions, and the other one is a physics-based controller. The reason why I'm doing both as separate is because it can get very long, especially if you want to do both of them. So, we'll do one and the other. Now, the benefits of uh, controller vector-based positioning movement is that it's very precise. So if you wanted to move a specific, let's say, step, you could do it. Whereas in physics, you can't really do that. As for physics, it's realism. Now, let's start with this guy. I go back into my old um, project, but the thing I did was I deleted the ground material ball. So, uh, I'm just going to start from something new. If you guys haven't watched the other ones, it'll be easier to follow along. So, we go into right click, create primitives and box. I'm just going to make a one by one box, click it somewhere here, and make its position 0, 0, and 0.5. So, it's just hanging above the ground. All right, the next thing I do is go to the camera, put it in a specific position where I can see the object and the best way would be like 0 minus 7 and like 5 and rotation being 70 0 0 and I think that's an okay um, position to be and then I remove the controller controller makes WASD move the camera and I just don't want to do that right now so now that we have it all moving I mean set up this way what we're gonna do now is go back to the cube and I'm gonna give it that property that we were uh, playing around with for a while in the property what I changed was I removed the X C and V and I just kept W S A D as is key press so as long as I press these it's gonna happen <coughs> so for translation based movement how do we do this uh, first things first, we're going to go into um, the object itself. So let's go into the component to the object, which is the cube, cuboid. And we're just going to reference it. So we just say node with a small n, and that's going to reference the cube itself. It has its own properties and functions. And the one we want is going to be set world position. And what that does is it sets its world position correctly. Now for W, we want it to move forward. So first things first, we're going to get its original position. So node, and then just use the arrows again, and get world position. And then we're going to add it by a difference of a direction. What we're going to do is add a direction forward. Now if we look into Unigen, the forward of anything in Unigen is positive y and anything that's negative y is behind as for x the right is positive x and negative x is left and then z up and z down negative z is down so what we do is now we go back into node and we get its direction all right so direction would be our direction and inside the brackets, we have the ability to ask which direction we want. So we're going to go into Unigen, Math, and then we're going to ask for the axis that we want. Axis und underscore, and we want the axis that... Let, let me just go back into axis underscore, and we want the axis that's forward. And since I already told you it was Y, we're going to do Y. Now. This is updating every frame, and since there's 60 frames, in one second our object is going to go from 0 to 60, like way too fast. So we're going to give it a limiter slash cap, and what we're going to give it is an inverse frame per second. So it only moves a little bit at a constant rate every frame. So it neutralizes the whole framing. And what we're going to write is uh, Unigen game. And inside this game class, we have the ability to get some time references. We have the ability to get frame, and we have the ability to get infer inverse frame.
frames per second and that's what we're gonna get so that works for forward now let's just keep writing this thing and copy paste it for the others and we're just gonna change a few options so for s we're gonna do negative y so just add an n in front of the y and then for a which is our left we're gonna do negative x and for right we're gonna do positive x and that should give us proper movement along this area now you're gonna see there's gonna be a few and it's not working and the reason why it's not working is you guessed it boys I didn't even save it all right now we press play and it should work and now it's working so pressing forward makes us go forward pressing back makes us go back right makes us go right and left makes us go left but let's say we didn't want to go right and left like we're not facing the same thing we want to rotate right and left so what we do is we go back to our right and left and we're gonna write something else we're gonna go into node again but instead of doing world position setting we're gonna do rotate rotate we'll just rotate it and now we're gonna rotate it by a certain amount and let's just go with one degrees and we're gonna rotate it on the z axis because if you look at things carefully, rotating along the axis means that there's a giant line that's cutting between that axis, so let's say Z, and then you have to rotate around that skewer. So if I were to just rotate, it's going left and right. So the best thing to do is rotate along Z. And how do we do rotations? Rotations require, if we hover over it, Rotations require quaternions. So we have to go into Unigen math and go into quaternion and get a uh, bracket. And now we actually have to initialize the quaternion. So we have a lot of overloads here. And I believe one of them was the super easy one. And that's this one, which says just give us the angles and it will do the rest of the math. So we're just gonna do zero, zero, and I believe minus one was for left. Eh, we'll find out. And now we're gonna do the same for uh, this guy. And we say rotate, and for this guy, we're gonna rotate positive. And let's just play it out. So now we have it moving and it was reverse. But now we have an object that's rotating. So it's moving all over the place and it's moving forward. If I press it back and we turn, it's doing what we want it to do. So that's the basics of a, a vector displacement movement. Now, its benefits is, as I said, very, very specificness. So let's say if I were to remove this, or actually, it would be easier if I just wrote this, copy paste it, and let's say if I wanted to move it once. So what we do for here is key down, and I were to say, instead of moving it in this much, we're just gonna move it forward once. And I wanna press play. Now its beauty is in precision. So if I were to just press it, it's moving by a certain step. And of course, the other one's keys and position. And if I were to do it, it's moving in a specific step. So if you had a grid-based system, this is one of the best ways to use movement uh, controls. Now its drawback is, if I were to have terrain and were to have some kind of obstacles in front of me, it's gonna go through it because it does not calculate anything physics. So that's one of its drawbacks. But its precision, it depends on your game. If your game requires precision, this is the best thing for you. If a game requires realistic physics, this is not really the best way for you. And that's gonna be part two. But for now, we got a basic controller movement. 
And yeah, uh, tomorrow or whenever I have time, I'm going to do the physics controller based systems. So for now, see you guys.